And people say, well, I regret that, I regret that. Well, the, 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 the thing to regret is if you don't learn from the experience. That's the regret. But learning from the experience, well, you just had a gift. What are you regretting for? And um, so um, I, um, I went to, into journalism because I, I, I was very interested in that. And I eventually became this television presenter. And when you look at my life, as I was saying, um, all the different elements of it, including going into journalism and seeing the media for what it is, going into politics with the Green Party and seeing politics for what it is, well, I, I didn't know at the time, but they were all giving me very, very um, important uh, understandings that would be useful later on. And then what happened is, I mean, this is a kind of bizarre story, but it happened. I uh, was... Uh, I was in the Green Party uh, and, and, I, and I was still working for the BBC as a television presenter and both were leaving me completely cold. Um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 B, the BBC, um, it, it, it's, it's not a great organization to work for if you care about uh, the, the truth and you care about, um, you know, more than the official version of everything. And uh, I also was looking at the, at the Green Party politics from the inside and seeing that it was just like every other party. And so I was, I, what do I do with my life now? Because I, I, I can't go on with either of these. And what happened was a very strange thing happened because in the um, early um, part of, what would it be, um, 1989, I started having this feeling that when I was in a room alone, I wasn't alone. And it's like this. It's like this, there was an atmosphere there. There's, there's something there. And through 1989, this this got more and more and more powerful, to the point where in early 1990, I was working for the BBC, and I was I was staying at a hotel called the Kensington Hilton, just down from the BBC uh, uh, headquarters. And I'm sitting on the side of the bed, and in in this apparently empty room, and and there there was such a sense of a presence there that I said into the room, you know, if there's something there, would you please contact me? Because you'll drive me up the wall. Few um, days later, um, I'm on the seafront with my son, Gareth, little boy then, in Ride, uh, where I live on the Isle of Wight. And um, I, 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 I go into this newsagent shop where uh, Gaz was looking at one of the books. And... I said to him, come on, guys, we'll go and get some lunch in the town. And, and as I said it, it was like the atmosphere changed, like the energetic field around me changed. And all I heard, it wasn't a, it wasn't a voice. It was a very strong thought form. It said, go and look at the books on the far side. And I'm standing there thinking, you know, do not shut yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what, no, basically, what the? And, so... I start walking across to the books in, in, a, in a daze, thinking, what is happening? And I knew this bookshop. The books it sold were for, you know, the tourists that come to the Isle of Wight. They were basically Mills and Boone and, and, and you know, perfectly formed English roses and having relationships with perfectly formed, you know, uniformed soldiers and all this stuff. So I'm thinking, what am I going over here for? But right in the middle of these books was one called Mind to Mind by a woman called Betty Shine. A, a, a picture was on the front. It was different to the other, so I picked it up and I turned it over and I read the blurb. And she was a psychic, uh, an English psychic, and uh, she uh, was telling her life story. So I bought the book, read it in 24 hours, found it very interesting, contacted her, um, because I wanted to go and see if she would pick up what the hell was happening around me for the last year. And um, so... I went, I told her nothing. What I told her was, because she did this hands-on healing as well, which is just an exchange of energy. You know, it's not mumbo jumbo, it's an exchange of energy. Reiki. Yes, it's just an exchange of energy, that's all it is. But anyway, um, I told her that because I said, I've got arthritis, maybe it will help. Because I didn't want to give anything away what was happening to me. So I'm sitting on this bench, um, this medical type bench in her front room, and you know, she's chatting away and she's doing the whole, you know, hands-on healing just next to my left knee. And suddenly the atmosphere changed again. And um, I felt like a spider's web on my face. Now what hit me was in her book, she said, when other levels of reality are trying to lock into you, you sometimes feel like a spider's web on your face. Well, I know what that, what that, that was now, it's electromagnetic energy. 
you know, you know when you, 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 you're you in a, a, a crowd, a football crowd with, of, of great emotional excitement, you, you feel like a charge of energy. Mm -hmm. The hair stands yeah, up yeah, on your yeah. neck, you know. That's electromagnetic, they're electromagnetic fields. So that's what I was feeling. But it did feel like a spider's web on my face. And I said nothing to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to Betty, but I'm thinking, what the hell? And then about 10 or 15 seconds later, um, she reels her head back and she said, my God, this is powerful. I've got to close my eyes for this one. And my bums for going further down the... <laughs> what have you got yourself into here, Ike? <laughs> and she starts telling me in March 1990 that I'm going to go out on a world stage and reveal great secrets. I would face enormous opposition, but they, whatever that is, would always be there to protect me. And that there, there was a, a shadow over the world that, and there was a story that needed to be told. That humanity was, gonna, was going to go through a phase of waking up and coming out of basically its coma, um, which is programming. And that I was going to go out and do that. Uh, one man cannot change the world, but one man can communicate the message that can change the world was one of the things she said. And I'm sitting there. I'm a television presenter for the BBC. I'm a national spokesman for the Green Party. Uh, and I'm thinking, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, and so I then leave, 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 leave her and get on a train. Uh, she lived near Hassex in Sussex, and, 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 um, or in Hassex, actually. And, and then I, I drove up. Or, or, or went up in the train to present a television program. But from that moment on, what, one of the things that was said, that, that she said, because she said, the first thing she said, she had no idea about this interaction in the Kensington Hilton. She's saying that they're telling me they know you, you wanted them to contact you, but the time wasn't right. And you, you, you know, now you've been brought here to be contacted. And they said, uh, they're saying that you're going to be led to knowledge and at other times knowledge will be put into your mind oh, all right okay what mm -hmm. so anyway uh, after that see at that time david did you think she was maybe crazy because you didn't no. understand that or would you an open book because when you speak out about stuff like that people go well he's maybe crazy but yeah again it's judging people and everybody's in their own different paths yeah i mean wh what i've been like uh, mate all my life is um i've never dismissed things that um I can't know absolutely are not true. Um, I, 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 I have this policy, I put things on the back burner and I see what comes. And if more information comes to support it, more information comes to support it, there comes a point where there's so much information supporting that that it crosses the line and you, know, you start to say, okay, I accept this is what's happening. But I don't just dismiss things mm. and never have on the basis that they're different just been the way I've always been. Was that the start of your journey then, going to this woman and everything, like it, awakening, a spiritual yes, awakening? Yeah, yes, yeah, it was. And, and um, you know, one of the, um, one of the, the things was that, it, you know, it, it was going to be tough. Uh, and, and so when I left that, um, left her house and got on with my life very, very quickly, synchronicity coincidences started to occur where i'd i'd meet people come across information come across books come across documents whatever that were starting to like hand me puzzle pieces and i started to realize as it built up and it built up and it built up that actually the world was not like i thought it was well not like i thought it was i didn't really have that, a, a, a view on that i don't think you just brainwashed it and didn't yeah, really understand I, 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 I never did believe that politicians around the world I always felt there was something else but you didn't even you didn't know what it was now I was beginning to understand what question it was everything. And how it works yeah and another thing that happened is that I would get uh, just a knowing that this is how I think this is what's going on here and then what would follow would be names dates places hard factual information that would support that view um, which kind of connects with we will put knowledge into his mind and this has gone on now for 30 years and it's gone through different different phases of information and uh it's taken me down a an extraordinary uh road of uncovering the world as it is behind the facade of what we're told it is 
And of course, it's taken me into realms of enormous ridicule and enormous abuse. But we come back to the greatest gift often that you are ever given is your worst nightmare or what appears to be. So if we go back to the Wogan show, because what happened eventually is I went on the Wogan show and talked about what was happening to me. And at that time, I was right in that period of the Wogan show, it was a period of about three months. I was going through an enormous transformation of that you didn't perception understand. that I didn't understand. No, because this is what happened just very, very, very briefly. Um, is that I, uh, I suddenly got this feeling I, I needed to go to Peru. I didn't know why, I'd never been there. I, I watched them play in the World Cup uh, a few times, but I didn't know anything about it. And long story short, I ended up in Peru and a, a series of enormously uh, uh, amazing things happened to me.